Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to show you how to make this table saw miter sled that I think looks an awful lot like a B2 stealth bomber. So a month or so ago I put out a video on how I made my cross cut sled and in that one I discussed a bunch of the options that you have when picking out the runners that you want to go on the underside of your sled that help it track back and forth inside the miter slots on the table saw top smoothly and without wearing out over time. So if you haven't seen that video, you probably want to go back and watch that because we're not going to cover it again here because at the time I knew I was going to be making the second sled so I cut a second set of runners. So let's just jump right into the build. If you need to refresh yourself on that one, I'll leave a link and you can go back to that. I used washers in the miter slots to hold the plastic runners up just above the surface of the table saw. The only material in this project other than the runners is some 3 quarter inch MDF. I just cut an 18 inch section off a full sheet, then cut that again at 30 inches. The big piece makes up the base of the sled, and the leftover piece is turned into the fence. I clamped a large speed square to the table saw fence to help me line up the base of the sled. It's not really important to the function of the sled to have the base be precise, but it goes a long ways towards making the miter fence precise when we get to that step later on. I nudged the table saw fence over until the point of the base was in line with the saw blade. With everything lined up, I used a countersink bit to drill pilot holes through the base and into the runners. Then I drove in several screws to lock the runners in place. I used a handsaw to trim the runners. This isn't exactly necessary, I just think it looks better. All right guys, now before we go any further, I wanna tell you about the sponsor of today's video, and that's Acme Tools. Now the main reason why I'm having to rebuild my miter sled is because this year I upgraded from a small job site table saw to this big cabinet style saw. Now you can actually see my last miter sled up there and that fit the old small job site saw and it won't fit on the new one. Now the interesting thing about both of the table saws that I've owned up until this point is that they're both on Acme Tools list of the best table saws of 2018. Uh, that doesn't mean that all of them have come out in 2018, it means that all of the best saws that you could buy this year are on this list. My DeWalt job site saw, I bought long before the list came out and it happened to be on there still. And then when I upgraded, I actually consulted that list, did a bunch of research and ended up with this saw stop saw. So if you are in the market for a new table saw, I'll leave a link down in the description over to the blog on Acme Tools website so that you can see that list for yourself and see what one of those saws might actually fit your budget and your needs and you're going to learn a lot in a short amount of time that way. At this point I'm moving on to the fence. I want to point out that this technique for making a fence is definitely not an original idea on my part. I got the idea from a video William NG put out called Two Cuts to a Perfect Miter Sled. I'll outline the steps here briefly, but if you want to see William's very detailed explanation, I'll leave a link in the description. I used my crosscut sled to make one perfect 90 degree corner. Then I set my table saw fence to 15 inches and cut the two opposite edges down to size. This left me with a perfect square. Next I set my fence to 3 inches and cut most of the way along one side. Then I flipped the board over and did the same thing to the perpendicular edge. I moved over to the bandsaw to finish the cuts and I was left with an L shaped piece that had a perfect 90 degree point. Back at the sled base I drew a reference line that would be perpendicular to the saw blade. Then I lined up a scrap piece with a perfectly straight edge and screwed one side down. I grabbed my biggest square and referenced it off the table saw fence, then pivoted the scrap piece and screwed down the other end once it was perfectly square. I put the back points of the miter fence up against the scrap piece and lined the front point up with the leading point of the base. I screwed the fence to the base temporarily, knowing that I would be fine tuning it in a minute. I made a test piece that had a perfect 90 degree corner, then I cut that corner off and carefully labeled all the important components. I measured both sides of my new triangle, and that would tell me exactly how far away from perfect my fence was. Alright, I'm not even going to pretend that I can explain to you what's going on here in this step because math and numbers just aren't friends of mine. Truth be told, I actually struggled with this step quite a bit, but in the end I did come out with a more accurate miter fence when I was all done. So rather than me trying to fight my way through and pretend that I know what I'm saying, just make sure you go down to the link in the description and go check out William's video where he does a much better job of explaining this than I ever could. In essence, William's formula will tell you precisely how far you need to move your fence in order for it to be perfect. After a little struggling, I got mine exactly right. I made a little test frame to see how well it worked and man those miter joints are far superior to anything I've been able to achieve up until now. So I put a few more screws in the fence to lock it in place for good. Yeah. You're 
quick. So as of right now, this thing's actually set up perfectly and ready to go to work, except for one little thing. When I slide it back far enough to get the blade in front of the workpiece, it's massively back heavy and it wants to fall right out of the track. So you're actually expending a lot of energy just trying to keep this flat on the table. Um, the thing is, we really only need this surface, this surface, and then the two runners. So there is a ton of stuff in here that's just weight towards the back that's useless wasted real estate. So the next thing we're going to do is kind of mark out what we can just hack out of this and throw away because there's no reason to have it be this tippy on the infeed side of the blade. So the sandpaper that I just glued on here is actually an old remnant piece from a belt that broke on my drum sander and it works really well to keep that kind of stuff around so that you can hack it up and use it for jigs like this. And in this case, it adds a lot of grip because on smooth MDF your workpiece is just going to slide around a lot but on top of that sandpaper it's not going anywhere. So it's a lot safer, it's a lot more precise to use it that way. And that really about wraps this up. I want to say a huge thank you to Acme Tools for supporting my channel and for sponsoring this video. And I also want to encourage you to go down into the links in the descriptions and check out Acme Tools blog and William NG's post about miter sleds because I took a lot of my inspiration from him. I'm also going to include a link to David Picciuto's miter sled, which is fairly uh, picture and painting specific, but he's got a lot of really good ideas in there too. And I really think that's about all I've got to say. So. Thank you guys for checking this one out and uh, we'll see you next time.